Renting is dead money. That's the often repeated refrain of real estate agents and people who have a mortgage. But is renting really that bad financially? In this video, I'll run through a simple scenario comparing renting versus buying. But first, let's see what some cherry-picked experts have to say. Phil Ruthven, founder of business information company Ibis World, has plenty of money, but has chosen to rent over the last 30 years. He recently told the ABC, I simply did the arithmetic to work out how you might approach retirement being either an owner or a renter. You retire on three times the amount of money that a person who owned a home would if you rented or leased a home for most of your life. You could buy a home and still have heaps left over to live very comfortably if you have rented for 20 or 30 years like I did. Accounting firm EY undertook a study earlier this year comparing renting versus buying and came to a similar conclusion. EY Chief Economist Joe Masters had these words to say, We really wanted to question what we found was quite a wide-held belief that renting is dead money and that the only way to get ahead is to buy a property. More often than not, over a 10-year period, the renter comes out financially better off. So to test their findings, let's work through a simplified scenario ourselves. Imagine there are two people, Mr. Black and Mr. Brown. They have identical salaries and living expenses. They live in the same suburb, own the same car, and live the same distance from work. They're both good savers and have saved up exactly $150,000 each. Mr. Black goes all in and decides to buy a house in Brisbane for $650,000. I'm using the details of an actual house that is currently for sale in Brisbane for $659,000, currently rented out for $400 per week until 2020. But let's assume Mr. Black can get the house for slightly cheaper and can move in straight away. He uses his $150,000 as a deposit and gets a loan for $500,000 over 30 years at 3% interest rate. Now that's a really good rate. To keep things simple, however, I will assume that the interest rate will not change over time, and I will not factor in things like inflation or salary increases. Yes, in reality, interest rates will probably decrease in the short term, but who knows where they'll be in, say, 10 or 15 years' time, so let's not speculate. Mr. Brown rents the house down the street, a near-identical house with the same number of bathrooms and bedrooms and all the rest of it. He can rent the house for $400 per week, which, as I said before, is the actual current rent. As we're not factoring in inflation, we'll keep the rent the same throughout the entire period. Mr. Brown chooses to invest his $150,000 and plans to add to it regularly. Let's say he's a fairly conservative investor and spreads his investment out over a number of different asset classes – cash, bonds, and a market-tracking ETF in the share market. Let's say he averages the same rate as the mortgage rate – 3%. That's a very conservative estimate, but let's see where it gets us. Using an online mortgage calculator for Mr. Black, for a 30-year loan at 3% interest rate and zero fees – I pretended that he actually found a bank with zero fees – he'll have to pay back $2,108 per month. Mr. Brown's monthly rental expenses are about $1,734. However, houses need maintenance, and this house in Brisbane isn't exactly new. It was built in 1980. So let's use the commonly quoted 1% rule – that is, 1% of the purchase price of your home should be set aside each year for ongoing maintenance. This means Mr. Black would have to set aside about $6,000 a year, or about $500 a month for maintenance. Let's be kind to him and only use half of that, so $250 per month. Mr. Brown has no maintenance costs, as he is renting. Let's assume that Mr. Brown and Mr. Black use an identical amount of electricity, water, gas, mobile phone, and internet, so let's not factor those in. They also have an identical amount of contents insurance, so let's also not factor that in. However, Mr. Black has to pay home insurance. I got a real quote online for the building only, using the actual details of the house in question. It works out to be about $88 per month, but let's round that down to $80 per month, as I may have gotten a few of the details wrong. Mr. Black also has to pay council rates. Using actual rates data from each suburb, Mr. Black will have to pay about $160 per month in rates. So the total housing expenses for Mr. Black will be about $2,598. Remembering that this is a very conservative estimate that favours Mr. Black, he's getting a really good deal here. Mr. Brown has total housing expenses of $1,734. Let's assume that Mr. Brown is a very good saver. Every extra cent that Mr. Black spends on his house, Mr. Brown will add to his investments. So that means Mr. Brown will be adding $864 per month to his investments. Using an online compound 
compound interest calculator over 30 years at 3%, Mr. Brown will end up with about $872,000 in savings. Mr. Black over 30 years will own his own house, valued at $650,000. Remembering I haven't taken into account inflation, yes, house prices could rise above the rate of inflation, but that's not a guarantee, as we all saw post-2008 in the United States. Be careful when you hear somebody say that house prices will always go up. So with all things being equal, using very conservative estimates favoring Mr. Black, Mr. Brown comes out ahead by more than $222,000. Remembering I halved the amount of maintenance Mr. Black had to pay, I rounded down all the other expenses, and I grossly undervalued Mr. Brown's investment potential. In reality, investment returns of 5 or maybe 7% would not be unlikely, especially if he put more of his money into the share market. Just for argument's sake, I'll bump up his average returns to 5% instead of 3%. With regular savings, he would end up with over $1.3 million, not taking into account inflation and increases in salary, etc. So financially speaking, renting is not dead money. Well, no more than mortgage interest paid back to the bank is. Of course, this all depends on where you choose to live. I'm sure you could find an inner city apartment with much more earning potential than, say, a suburban house. To be fair, my little example doesn't necessarily mean that buying a house is bad. Having a mortgage can have a number of benefits. First of all, as many people often say, a mortgage forces you to save. Mr. Brown was a good saver, but many renters in his situation would spend that extra money on non-essential goods and services like eating out or getting massages. So yes, as a renter, you need to be very strict on your spending habits in order to save like Mr. Brown did. Secondly, owning a home has many intangible benefits like the security of not being kicked out by a landlord, and the flexibility to renovate your own home. But renting also offers some benefits too, like flexibility in where you live. In the end, it's ultimately up to you what you do regarding buying a house or renting. If you want to buy, buy. But don't go around telling your renting friends that renting is dead money, because you're just repeating a myth spread by the property industry. If you want the stability of a home, get a mortgage. But if you want to have more flexibility and you're good at saving, maybe renting is the way to go. I'll finish with some sage advice from American businessman Robert Kiyosaki. I have a link to his books in the description below. My rich dad, my best friend's dad, taught me the simple definition of an asset and a liability. An asset puts money in your pocket. A liability takes money out. Many so-called experts will point to things like paying down principal, tax breaks from mortgage interest, and appreciation as reasons why the house is an asset. But paying down principal is simply saving, and savers are losers. The tax breaks for your mortgage do not offset the costs that go out of your pocket each month. And if you're banking on appreciation, you're basically gambling, as homeowners in the Great Recession painfully discovered. This is not to say you shouldn't buy a house. I'm simply trying to help you see that it is not an asset. Rather, it is your home, and should be enjoyed for that, not as your ticket to a secure retirement. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.